So what we're going to talk about today is how to keep your player within the boundaries that you want them to be in for your game. And I'm just going to use this one as an example. I, um, there's a, a bunch of water here Let's see, that I've turned off, but if I turn it back on again, you'll see there's a whole bunch of tiled water objects and everything like that. We're going to turn them off because it's just going to make things so much easier. Um, and if you take a look at the layout of the game, what you'll see is your character starting here. They've crash landed on this planet, and there's your spaceship. And so if I hit play and I turn around, there's like smoke coming out of it, and you can kind of see it. And it's literally crashed into the ocean floor. And uh, I just basically took that spaceship and just kind of put it right in there. And there's a duplicate of that spaceship that's at the end of scene three, which is another island maze that's over here that you can get on and it blasts off. So the goal for right now is for the player to run through this maze and kill the bad guys and get to the cave that is right here. Now, I don't want them to do shortcuts. I also don't want them to go off the edge of the map. So how we do that, actually pretty simple. <clears throat> now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. There's actually a, a plugin, a free plugin for Unity called iTween that I was reading about a couple weeks ago that will actually allow you to um, uh, set a path and, and, and hold your character to that path within a certain limit. I don't like that because it's a little bit more restricting than what I like to do. Um, but it's something I guess you could try if you wanted to, but I have a funny feeling you'd delete it. What's just easier is just using a series of colliders. So I'm going to click on my terrain. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to click on my terrain. And on, whenever you click on an object, you can add components in Unity. And components are ways of adding special effects or whatever. And we're going to get really start using this, this area under the inspector a lot. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a component. We just want one that's going to go along the side here to keep our character from going off the map, one that's going here from going off this map, here, and then also we do not want them to go across over into here. Now, if you look at this, what I've done is to just for you know safety's sake, I guess, is a way of saying it, I've actually got terrains here, 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 and here. They're just flat terrains. Um, but I don't want my, my characters to be able to go that far. Um, so they're, And they'll be underwater. And you could do something like if there's a collision with the water object that it starts taking away life so that like the water's poisonous or whatever. And that would then also keep people from going in the water. Um, but they still might try. Um, you could put a monster in the water. My, my idea was to put some sort of nasty fish in there or something like that that would come attack you and was so powerful that you didn't have a chance, you know, so you just wanted to stay out of the water. But if you don't want to go through all of that or if you just want to build something where you need to, to, you know, keep people from going in there, then what you want to do is build in a collider. So you hit the add com uh, component, and I was doing it for my previous demo, so or for previous class. And there's a whole bunch of stuff under here that you can explore and have fun with, but we're going to go to physics. And under physics, there's a whole list of things that you can do to modify the way a certain object works. You can make objects in the cloth. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to add ourselves a box collider. So I'm going to click that, and then I get a box collider. And once I click on that box collider, it doesn't look like anything's changed, but you actually are selected on the box collider. And if I were to zoom in here, you might see a very, very, very small little green box right at the center of that. And it's because it's come in at a coordinate of 0, or uh, yeah, basically a coordinate of 0, 0, 0, which is that top left-hand corner of your terrain. So in order to see this a little better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the height, the size of my collider, and let's make it like 400. So now I've made it 400, and now you can kind of see this very long, very tall cube. And then what I'll do is I'll take my x, which is this way here, and I can click and scale it this way. Or I know my terrain is 1,000 units long, so I'm going to go and just click 1,000 units. 
Now, it grows in both directions. So obviously, if I want this collider to be <coughs> here in the center, I can type the x, and I can go positive 500. And now if I do that, I've got this collider that's kind of sitting right there on the edge of this terrain. And if my character were to jump in the water and try to swim or walk on the ocean floor over to the next terrain, it would keep him or her from doing that. Now, let's say I wanted my character to be able to go and explore their wreckage. I mean, you know, I mean, in a game, you could say, uh, have your character have no weapon, and they could go back to the wreckage and retrieve a weapon that's lying there. I could do that. So when I do my next collider, I might not want to have it right on the edge of the terrain, as you'll see in just a second. So let's add another component. And you can also type in box in the search menu there, and then box collider will be the uh, first one. We're doing a 3D game, so do not make the mistake of choosing a 2D box collider, which is in and of itself kind of an oxymoron. And I don't know exactly how a box collider would work in, maybe it should be called a square collider in a 2D game. But you can set up 2D games in three, three dimensions. So anyway, and now we've got ourselves another really tiny little collider that's back in the top corner. So I'll do the same thing, 400. But this time, I'm going to set it up in the z-axis. I'm going to set that up to be 1,000. And now you can see I've got <coughs> this collider here. And I can set up the z positive 500. And then I want to move it down in the x-axis to 1,000, which is going to move it to the end of that terrain. Now, one of the other things that you might see is these may be 400 units tall, but they also go below the terrain. That doesn't really matter. You're not going to hurt anything by doing that. If your character has a jet pack and you don't want them to fly over the collider, then maybe you should, you know, we could take the Y positioning and set it up so that we push it up to, um, if I do 200, they'd be sitting flush, and you could run the risk of maybe a a hole or something like that, or a low part in the terrain, allowing them to go under. Well, uh, theoretically, you shouldn't. But So I might just take it up to 100 on both of these. And now I've got about 100 units sticking underneath the terrain, but 300 units going above. And that's going to be pretty good. So now I've got this. However, if I do want this person to be able to go out and explore this wreckage, they can't do it because this is now blocking them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move it over a little bit. And here's what's really cool about colliders. They don't actually have to be physically touching the object that they are a component of. So I can push this collider over about 200 more units to give my character the ability to go explore this wreckage. But I don't have to add it to this terrain that the wreckage is actually on, which is kind of cool. So I can just take this. That's the x-axis. So I'm going to take my x-axis, and I'm going to say 1,200. And that gives me probably a little bit more than I need. Let's go um, 1,100. That's perfect. But now I've got another problem. What's my problem? Can you see it? Yeah, I've got a gap here. So if the person wasn't paying attention, or if they were, and they wanted to get out, they could get out here. So that means I have to go back to my first collider and make it a little longer. So <clears throat> I added 200 here. So I'm going to take my collider and make it 1,200 long. And that actually worked. Oh, because I only made it 100 longer. Um, so that worked, but it also pushed it over here. If I make it 1,100, okay, you'll notice there's still a gap. And the reason why there's still a gap is because it moves, it grows in both directions. So then I could go over here, take my x to 550, and now it's going to be perfect. And if you want them to be a little wider, I don't blame you. Go 10 and 10. And now you can see, and I like making them a little wider myself when I do this, because when I look at it over top, 
I can make sure that there's a little bit of overlap, oh, there we go, between the colliders. And if you see a little overlap like that, that means you've got no holes. So you know now that the player is not going to be able to find a way through or find a hole in there. Now, so to do a, an easy one here, to do the same thing over here, I can kind of sort of duplicate colliders. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I'm going to go to my first collider that I did. I can turn it off and on just to make sure that it's the right one. Then I'm going to click over here on this little gear, and I'm going to say Copy Component. And then I'm going to click on the gear again, and I'll say Paste Component as New. So now I've got a new collider that's there, but it's in the exact same position. I just need to move it down along the z-axis here. So I'll take this, move it 1,000 units over on the z-axis, and there we go. I already said this, but I'm going to go over this one more time. I know to move it over 1,000 because that's the size of my terrain. If you're just using the default size in your terrain, then you would be moving it in increments of 500. Okay? So if I click on my terrain here, if you're not sure what size your terrain is, click the gear. And then there's your terrain width and height. So that's going to help you do that. Okay? We don't need to worry about that right now, so we'll just close that. So now I've got my colliders here. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this collider, with the second one. So I, I click on it. I copy the component. I copy it as new. I've got another one down here. It's always the new one always goes to the bottom. And I can set the x-axis back to 0. And now I've got my collider right here. However, I have another problem. What do you think is the problem here? Exactly. My player can't get into the cave that I want them to get into to finish this level, okay? Because that collider is going to keep them from doing it. So here's an instance where now I have to kind of play with it um, by dragging. So I'm going to take this, and in the z-axis, I'm going to change my size. So I'm going to scale it way down. And then I'm going to move it over. And then scale it way down again. Until I have something that's going to block my character from going in the water over here. And then I also want to check the gap, make sure that they're actually touching. That looks pretty good. But now we've got a gap over here. But I also want to check really quickly to make sure that it's not cutting off the entrance to the uh, cave. It's not. This is excellent. So now <clears throat> I can copy this one, paste it as a new one, move its position roughly into the middle of that gap, and then increase the size. And if there's a little too much overlap on the corner here, that's not a big deal. So we got a lot of overlap there. And that looks pretty good. I might extend it a little bit bigger here. Whoops, I'm going to, oh, I'm, I'm moving it side to side. Undo. I don't want to move it. I want to extend it bigger. There we go. Just so that the person can't jump off the cliff, maybe find a hole in here and, and then fall through the floor or the terrain or something like that. So this looks really good. However, I still have a problem that would only exist in some games. And that is if my character had enough jump ability or a jet pack or something, they might be able to fly over this one little gap that's here. So again, I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy my component. Actually, I want to do the, set, the smaller one, copy component, and paste as new. And now I've got a, a, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, a sixth box collider. And if I move it in the z-axis, whoops, oh, I did copy the wrong one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to bring it over here have a little bit of overlap, just a touch. 
And then I'm going to just lift it up. So now I've got a collider that exists right here in line with the others. It's not causing any problems there, but would keep my, my character from jumping, climbing, jetpacking over the middle. It's a little taller than the others, but oh well. That's not really going to be that big of a deal. These things are invisible anyway. So I've now set my boundaries for the level. <clears throat> and it's actually for the way I structured this, it's really important. I need to do a lot of work on the texturing here. Um, but it's going to be really important to allow my character to walk into the entrance of the cave, because that actually is going to transport them to the next level. So I've got a portal, basically, here that when they step in here, it transports them to the next level, which is the cave level. Okay, And then when they get to the end of the cave level, they'll transport them to a third level, which is another island over here that's another maze. So it's really important that I can let my character go forward into that cave to hit that portal. Now, that, however, does not address the character walking or cheating, if you will, my maze. If they want to jump across here, they can easily do that. They could make, you know, they could easily just swim straight, which is what I do when I'm testing, is I swim straight across to get over here. Okay, but I don't want them to do that. I want them to have to go around. So now I have a choice. I can, one, create, like I, like I said to you guys earlier, like an enemy fish, like some really super strong enemy that's in the water only that you know you could never hope to kill fast enough. If they touch you twice, you're dead, you know, that sort of a thing. Or I could make there be damage whenever you touch the water. So if you go in the water, there's damage and you have, you know, it, you've got to get out really fast and you lose or you lose life. Or I can set colliders in amongst here if I didn't want to do that to the person. Because sometimes doing that, it annoys people. You know, I mean, I, it, a lot of it just depends on the game. And, you know, those people, hey, that's part of the game rules and figuring out the game rules is that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my colliders and I'm going to collapse them. And now I don't need them anymore. I could continue creating colliders that are attached to the terrain and just willy-nilly put them anywhere. But what I like to do is actually use something that we call an empty object. And empty objects are exactly what they sound like. They are objects that have no mass. They have no physical substance. They don't show up at all. And if I create an empty, it just goes, I don't know, where, where is that? So boom, it goes right into the center, OK? But it's also really far down and everything like that. So I don't like that. What I'll do, and I like to do this anyway, is I'm going to click on my terrain, OK? And I want to create an empty object that is a child of the terrain. So I'm going to go game, game object, create empty child. That sounds like some weird, depressing psychological term, creating an empty child. Um, it <laughs> has nothing to do with real children, OK? And if I create an empty child, what happens is now the empty object that is created is created in the 0, 0 marker, OK? Right in the corner of the, of the terrain that you were chosen or that you had selected. And now you'll see that game object right underneath the terrain here. So now all I have to do is hit Add Component. It's going to keep the search from last time. So I'm going to add my box collider. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take my size and set it to 400 Y so that it's going to be really tall. And then I remember I set it up 100 in height. And then I can just take my X and I'll just drag out, say, about 50 or so. And I'll take the collider and let's set it to 10. So now what's cool about this is I can just drag this around. So if, let's say, I want it to be in this little inlet here, OK? And then maybe the other thing is maybe there's places where you want to let them cheat, right? And if they find it, then cool, right? So you can also kind of design that into the game. So I'll take a look at this. I can rotate it just like any other object. So I can kind of set it at an angle. And that looks pretty good. And then I'll move it over a little bit like that, like that, being careful not to chop off my um, too much of my um, thing there. Maybe 10's 
actually looking a little thick, so maybe five, so that they can go into the water. They're just not going to know, you know, they'll, they'll hit something. And then now, let's say I've got a good size that works for me. I can right click and I can just duplicate this object. Now I've got a second one there. And the other one's still there. See, there it is. And I can take this one and I can kind of set it in there. And I can rotate it and kind of set it in as, an, as another collider. And you can just keep doing that um, all around your maze as basically a, a way of saying, no, sorry, you can't go here. Now, a couple of quick things. One, you can also add colliders to any other object that you put in the game. So for instance, let's say this was a flat field. And I had a stone wall that was lining a path. Well, in that case, just add a really tall box collider that your player can't jump over on the stone wall. And then you just line your path with the stone wall, and you've effectively done the exact same thing. You could use any sort of fencing, um, that sort of a thing. So you can do this in any number of ways. If your game is a maze game, or, or not game, but if your level is a maze uh, level and you're indoors or something like that, then these colliders are actually going to be generated on the walls that you build in Blender anyway. So you wouldn't need to do this if you're going to have walls as part of your game. So that we can do uh, in Blender very easily. And then whenever you place walls in Blender, you won't be able to walk through them. So this is really only useful if you are trying to keep people from getting to certain places in your game when you've got a wide open game. So for instance, you've got a path that's winding back and forth, and you've got trees in the middle. Well, somebody smart might try to cut through those trees to get to the path on the other side, and then lose out on the experience of the game that you're trying to, to build. So the best thing to do, if you don't want them to do that, is to create some way, some mechanism of keeping them from sh doing a shortcut. Now, true sandbox games do that by making you go get objects. So if you try to do a shortcut, you won't be able to finish the mission because you didn't pick up the potion from over here or whatever. But if that's not the case, if you're just doing a survival game where you're just trying to make it through to the end because and there's enemies coming at you, then doing a shortcut is an easy way of making the game end faster and not having to fight all the bad guys. Well, that's the sort of thing that you can keep your player from doing by kind of setting up all of these uh, game objects. <clears throat> the other thing that you should do really quickly is if you do have multiple game objects, I'm going to click with the holding the shift key down and I'm going to take a look at and see if there's a gap. So there is a gap here and I'm going to want to make the first one that I put in a little longer um, here so that that gap is now gone. And I may also drag it forward a little bit more like this and like that, and then I'll shift click on both of them again to make sure that they overlap so that there's no gaps. So that's the other thing that's important is if you're going to do something like this, you want to make sure that there's no gaps that your character might accidentally be able to find. Does, does this make sense to everybody as far as how you do the colliders? I mean, it's really easy to add a collider on there. It's right under the component. Search for box. There you go. One question I did get is, Wise Pro, can I use sphere colliders? Can I, you know, can I use other shapes? If it works, yeah, sure. There's no reason why you can't. The one thing to be very careful of is the mesh colliders. Mesh colliders are very complicated. They don't work really well on some objects, and then other objects they work really well on. Um, your terrain has a collider already on it that is a terrain collider. That's what keeps your character from falling through the floor. So you don't need to worry about that. But that doesn't keep the person from jumping up you know, a steep hill, as you guys have probably found out. You can just keep jumping up and up and up and up and up. But if you've got a true box collider right on the edge of a mountain, like I've done here, okay. If you've got a true box collider like this, my character will never be able to go up that hill past where the point where the collider is. Okay, um, And you can also change that with code so that they can't go up a steeper slope or that sort of a thing. But even still, I think you get the idea that you want to you kind of limit your, your players 
into a certain area just so that you don't have to worry about it. So now I don't have to worry about what's going to happen when my player gets over here and can see the end of the world. Because that's, that's never a good game experience for your player, is if they can see the end of the, the edge of the terrain. That's not fun. You know what I mean? So if you're building a true sandbox game like this, you still have to put in limitations so that your characters can have fun and do a certain level of, of whatever, but not be able to cheat too easily, if that makes any sense. OK? Don't forget to save often so that you're not messing up and losing all your work. Any questions? All right.